Right now, I never understand why we don't eat more mussels. I think, I think it's improving, but I think the point about it is it's shellfish, it's affordable, and it is the simplest thing to cook. I mean, we, we can't afford prawns and crayfish and things anymore. I saw crayfish prices the other day. Enough said. My goodness, I need to sell my house, I think. But anyway, mussels. Clams are expensive, oysters are even getting expensive. Mussels are still pretty darn cheap. And as I said, very simple to cook. And what I'm doing here today is, I'm doing a slightly different version because what I've done is I've used a better wine for it because the whole thing about it is the mussels are as good as the wine itself. So we're using a Gewürz Traminer, which is a delightful wine from Alsace. And it's, it's got a little bit of a spice to it. They say it's got the flavors of light cheese and, and musk and things. I don't see that, but it does have that little bit of spice. And it's dry with a little bit of sweetness at the end, so it suits mussels really well. But first of all, I'm gonna do something else. I'm just gonna make some bread to go with it. And I've got my herb butter that you know I use my leftover herbs for, and I've just got some baguette. And I'm gonna use the herb butter in this. I use the herb butter for everything, I have to be honest, because I always have some leftover herbs. And if I just whip up a little bit of butter, you know, on the day, what I end up with is it's just in my freezer. And so I'm just gonna cut this and put it in this bread. So I've got a baguette, I've cut it in half and a decent amount of butter, but don't get completely stupid about it. And then we'll just put the top on that, press it down and whack that in the oven. So it's pretty simple stuff. It's got garlic in it, that butter, it's, oh, it's nice. I like that. And it's got lots of little bits that are breaking off because I should have left it out a little bit longer. But as I said, that goes into the fridge. Into the fridge, Ian, into the stove. <laughs> into the oven. Where did I get that from? Now, the mussels themselves. As I said, pretty simple stuff. Just a wok is mostly the easiest thing. And I just want some onion and just, just come and have a look here, James because I'll just show you how to cook. I am going quite strange today. I've said, just show you how I'll cook, but I will show you how to cook it in a minute. Just show you how I will cut an onion nice and finely. So if you just have a look there, mate. You see, I'm just cutting it across here in thin strips, and then you cut it like that, across ways. And that is the simplest way to chop an onion finely. And we don't want big chunks of onion for this. So, that's it. Pretty simple stuff. Right, now, to cook that onion, a good dollop of butter. Oh, about 20 grams, I reckon. Yeah, something like that. And about two tablespoons of olive oil. Accurately measured, of course. <laughs> Beautifully done. So we just heat that, and we'll make sure we get all the scraps there, and put that onion in there. It's, that's about oh, just under a half an onion. I'll put a little bit more. And I'll just grab a wooden spoon. I knew I had one somewhere. And we will just cook that gently. You don't want any colour to this. You just want it gently cooked. You know, just to soften it. Right, the mussels themselves. We'll have a look there. As you can see, beautiful mussels. They've been cleaned. If they haven't been cleaned, you just pull the little ropey thing off them, that's called the beard. But they have all been cleaned. There's about a kilo there. I don't know whether I need a kilo. About three quarters of a kilo. Don't worry, I will use the rest of them. Beautiful in a nice little salad. But I don't want to be here three hours opening these. Oh, blast it. I am being silly. If I open them now, oops, musical. Musical, I am. But if I open them now, what happens is I don't have to come back to them later, do I? And always put a lid on it. Now, there are two ways to do mussels. The French and the, and the Flemish, which is from Belgium, they are the famous mussel people. And what they do is they put them in a big pot with a lid and they keep tossing it and tossing it and tossing it until they're all open. Now, that's quite a good idea, but my problem with that is there's always some mussels that are overcooked by the time they're all open. So I do it a different way. I just get grab a pair of tongs and I stand here. And I pull them out as they open. 
So I just keep on tossing it around a bit. And see, they're starting to open now, so we won't be long. So the first ones will open now. So you see what I mean? If I lift those until they were all open, they certainly would be overcooked. Right? So this is the Hewlett one. And then we just pull them out. You can take the top lid off if you like. I'm not bothering, but you can. The other thing about this is what you end up is with a lovely stock, which you then add some cream and a couple of other things to it. But the stock is full of the juices of the sea. Can you see in there, James? Are you able to? Oh, good. So you're seeing my muscles opening here. <laughs> because they just, they just pop open. And as I said, you pull them out, just bend the top back, or take it off if you really want to. Now always remember with muscles, is when you're using them at the beginning, if they're open, you give them a little tap with your finger, and if they don't shut, they're dead, so you get rid of them. And it's pretty much the same way if they don't open when you're cooking them, you get rid of them. There's two schools of thought on this. I'm a great believer in, you know, better safe than sorry. Now, I reckon that's pretty close to enough for a portion, unless you're very, very hungry. If you're very hungry, fine. But I reckon that'll do us. So what I'm going to do, as I said to you, I'll keep on doing it because what I'm going to do is use this for a salad. So we'll just whip the rest out. Nice and plump, these muscles. I'm very happy with these. Looking good. And you know, you can always tell how fresh and wonderful they are if they all open. And they're certainly doing that. Just reduce that a little, because I'm going to put some cream in it. And there's actually a lot of liquid there, so I don't want too much liquid. And when I'm talking about the salad, I would just make a nice salad with some Asian greens. Maybe a little Asian dressing, not too complicated, but just a little bit of chilli, a little bit of ginger, a little bit of garlic, some tomatoes in there, some leaves in there. Be lovely. Right, a couple of tablespoons of cream, just normal cream. Some chopped parsley and snipped chives. Quite a bit of that, because it really does add a little bit of flavour, and I'll put them into the salad ones as well. So that's for me. Oh, they're beautiful. They really are. Ian, you dumb. Of course I have. Of course I have. Bit of pepper, no salt. You'll find that they are certainly reasonably salty. Let's just have a little taste. See how we go. Oh, good. That is lovely. That is lovely. Now I need a spoon for that. I'll just have to use that. Now, as I said, any leftovers can go on to our salad ones. Just turn that off. Yes, we're looking good. A little bit of more of the herbs over the top, just to give it a bit of bright, fresh flavour. Wipe the plate, and then we will have a look, my dear friend, at our bread, which should be ready. And that butter is melted through there. Just have a look there, James, for me, please, mate. You see what I mean? See that butter is melting. It's on the top. Lots of herbs to go with the mussels, which got a nice herby flavour. And there we have it. Cheap seafood. You can whip it up in five or ten minutes. And it is absolutely delicious. A bit biased there, but I really do like that dish. I reckon it's a ripper. And the Gewürztraminer that I said I would serve alongside. The most beautiful wine to go with this. Oh, that's good. Here we have it. So Gewürztraminer, lovely creamy herby sauce. Ripper stuff. <laughs>